It's that time again. Time to enter the formidable world of the paranormal. And tonight, I want to tell you a rather strange tale. It concerns a paranormal event which most of us have experienced at one time or another in our lives. It's just that we don't recognize it as important at the time. It's called precognition. Anyway, picture, if you will, an idyllic country cottage set in a beautiful village, the sort that are dotted around this area. For obvious reasons, I'll not identify the village as the people to whom this strange event happened wish to remain anonymous. The cottage is thatched with mullioned windows set in a mass of rambling ivy. There's a small front garden, mostly turned over to roses, with a short straight drive leading from a wicket gate to the front door. One summer evening, some five years ago, at about 9.45 p.m., the owner of the house was just leaving his front door to take his dog for a walk. As he called goodbye to his wife, he noticed a young man of about 25 coming down the lane towards the house. He didn't take much notice of him and reached the gate of his house and opened it. Just as he was about to go through the gate, the young man reached him and stopped in front of him. He looked pale and very, very sad. The old man asked him if he could help, but the young man just stood there, not exactly looking at him, rather looking through him and past him. He didn't say a word. And then, after a few seconds, which seemed more like minutes, the young man just turned and walked away slowly the way he'd just come. The old man was slightly bemused by this event, but didn't think too much about it. The only thing which concerned him was the way his dog was behaving. Because as soon as the dog had seen the young man, the hairs on its back had stood on end, and he'd cowered behind his master, growling quietly. As soon as the man had disappeared round a bend in the lane, the dog had returned to normal. Anyway, the old man continued on his walk, and when he returned, he told his wife what had occurred. They then put it out of their minds. The next night, the old man again left the house at 9.45 p.m. to take his dog for its nightly walk. And again, he saw the young man approaching the gate, the same look of sadness on his pale face. And again, his dog became frightened and fretful. Concerned that the young man was probably up to no good, the old man challenged him. But once more, he got no reply. The young man just stared at the cottage front door and then turned away and walked slowly back the way he had just come. This time, when the old man returned from his walk, he decided to call the police if he saw the young man again, as he was concerned that his house might be the target for a potential robbery. After all, for all he knew, the young man might be checking up on when the house was either empty or occupied only by an old lady who would not present much resistance to a burglar. The next night, the old man determined to get some sort of answer from the young man if he saw him again. And he insisted that his wife saw him off from the front door so that she could see the young man for herself and be able to furnish a description to the police if necessary. Sure enough, on the dot of 9.45 p.m., the old man opened the front door to go out. And once again, he, and this time his wife as well, saw the young man coming slowly down the lane towards their cottage. So they stood there on the front step and waited to see what the young man would do. He reached the gate of the cottage and stopped. Then he turned slowly and looked at the couple standing by the front door. With what seemed like a great effort, he opened the gate and made his way laboriously towards them. When he was about three feet from them, he stopped. The old man challenged him to tell them what he wanted. At first, the young man said nothing. And then, in a voice which seemed to come from a great distance, it was so low, he asked the couple to call the police, as there had been a car accident about a half a mile down the lane. He then added a sentence which seemed to make no sense at first. He asked the couple to tell Sally that Michael had gone, but he would see her soon. 
mystified by the young man's reference to Sally, as the man's wife was not called Sally, and determined to find out why he had come to his gate for the past three nights. The old man demanded that he tell them what he was playing at, as it was upsetting his wife. He didn't place too much credence in the statement that there had been an accident. It seemed to be a red herring to him. The young man stood there and said nothing for a few more moments. And then something happened which made them doubt the evidence of their own eyes. The young man said very quietly, I'm sorry, I must go. And simply faded away before their eyes. There was no mistaking what they'd just seen. What had been a solid figure of a sad-faced young man, a figure capable of opening a solid wooden gate, had disappeared. At this moment, they became aware of their dog. Remember, all this time the animal had been cowering behind its master, growling. But the moment the young man had disappeared, it began to leap about in a frenzy of excitement. All trace of fear had gone, and it seemed eager to go for its walk. Taken by surprise, the old man lost his grip on the dog's lead, and it haired off through the gate and down the lane, but in the opposite direction to normal. The old man asked his wife to call the police and report what had happened, and then set off in pursuit of his dog. The dog seemed to be playing a game with its master. Just as it looked as if the old man would be able to catch hold of the lead, the dog ran on ahead a few yards and turned as if waiting for its master to catch up again. And then it would do it again. And this went on for about half a mile. Then, as the old man rounded a bend in the road, he saw in front of him a terrible scene. A car had come off the road and had ploughed into a tall oak tree. The police and ambulance were already there. As he approached the crash, a police sergeant came up to him and tried to turn him away. But as the old man's dog had gone up to the wrecked car, he was allowed to go near and retrieve it. The dog now seemed content to sit still and allow his master to get hold of its lead. Curiosity prompted the old man to ask the sergeant what had happened, and he was told that they'd been following the car as it had no tail lights, and were just about to pull it over when it had speeded up for no apparent reason and had left the road at the bend and crashed into a tree. The occupants were a young man and a young woman. The young man had been killed instantly, and the young woman was badly hurt. At this moment, the body of the young man was being taken from the wreck, and the old man saw that it was the same young man that had been coming to his gate for the past three days. His face was virtually unmarked, and bore the same sad and pale look that it had when he had visited the old man. So the old man told the police sergeant what he had experienced for the last three days, and, on an impulse, asked what the name of the driver was. He was not surprised to hear that it was Michael. And as far as could be determined, the young woman was called Sally. He then told the sergeant that the young lady was about to die as he had remembered and had suddenly realized the significance of the words that the ghost for such it must have been had told him tell sally i'll see her soon sure enough at that moment they were interrupted by an ambulance man who said that the girl had just died the man then asked when the accident had occurred and again was not surprised to learn that it had been at 9.45 p.m. at the same time that he had seen the young man at his front gate. Quite naturally, the policeman took the old man's story with a pinch of salt, especially as it was obvious that he couldn't have seen the victim at the time he had said, as by then he was dead. And in any case, there hadn't been enough time for the young man to walk half a mile to a stranger's house and then half a mile back, even if he hadn't died in the crash. When the old man returned home, he told his wife what he had seen and heard, and they both realized that, for some unknown reason, they had been singled out to be given a warning of a future disaster. They didn't find out why until a few days later, when they received a letter from a distant relative. 
It informed them that the relative's son and his wife, who had never met the couple, had decided that as they were going to be in the area, they would visit them and perhaps try to catch a room for a night or two. But they had been killed when their car had spun off the road and had crashed into a tree. And strangely, for about two days before they set off, the sun had seemed pale and withdrawn, and had kept saying that he had an odd premonition that something was going to happen. But his wife had prevailed on him, and they had gone ahead with their plans as arranged. And a photograph of the young couple was enclosed with the letter. Written on the back of it were their names. Michael and Sally. Sally.